Disclaimer. Please forgive me now for there may be mispronunciations in this video. The Great Dismal Swamp is home to quite a few ghost stories and freak incidents. The swamp itself stretches across northeastern North Carolina and up into southern Virginia. It is one of the largest natural areas in the eastern United States with over 100,000 acres protected by the state and federal preserves. With its massive land mass that could date back for thousands of years, comes a long and complex history of human settlement and exploitation. It was home to Native American bands for over 13,000 years, just to sum up a little bit of how old this swamp may be. It was George Washington himself who was the one of the earliest men dedicated to transforming the swamp into something other than just a swamp. He was a major investor in the Great Dismal Swamp Company, a company that was attempting to colonize the swamp by draining it and transforming it into farmland. This was an impossible action and instead the company turned to harvesting timber from the swamp. Eventually this led to the creation of the Great Dismal Swamp Canal for transporting the logs from the deep forests. And the canal remains the oldest man-made waterway in America still in use. The history of this swamp includes it once being the home to a small number of Maroon communities. Maroons were enslaved people who freed themselves and fled into the wilderness, in this case to the swamp, to avoid recapture. The presence of these communities today is commemorated in the Underground Railroad Pavilion, located on a trail near the Great Dismal Swamp National Park headquarters in Suffolk, Virginia. Though the swamp had been home to outlaws, poets, ghosts, fugitives, and warring armies, it still, till this day, seems untouched by history. However, the swamp is dangerous with its mazes of islands and waterways, and let's not forget the dangerous animals. The water is deep in some areas and is impossible to climb out of. Many have lost their lives beneath its waters. Now we've discussed the history of the swamp, let's talk about the many legends and tales surrounding this area, specifically the one about the Phantom Lovers. First, people have experienced mysterious lights and oddly enough, animals disappearing after being shot by hunters, vanishing without a trace, and not even leaving a drop of blood. Some people have seen phantom figures in the woods, dressed in everything from colonial era clothing to that of the early 20th century lumberman. But we are here for the phantom lovers. Amongst the swamp is Lake Drummond. This is where the story of a pair of American Indian lovers pledged to be married, but tragedy happened. The bride-to-be died on the morning of the wedding from what they say was an unknown illness. The girl was buried in the depths of this small swamp. In days and weeks that followed her death, her young lover fell into depression and madness obsessed with the idea that she was still alive. He believed that her family must have sent her away and that she was waiting for him to come and rescue her. His friends and family tried to convince him that his lover had indeed died, but he refused to hear it. He was sure she was out there in the wilderness of the swamp, and one night he vanished into the swamp. He wandered for days, living on roots and berries and suddenly lost and broken. One night he came upon Lake Drummond, and out of the dark water of the lake he saw the soft blinking of a firefly as it flittered back and forth. Convinced the pale light was a signal from his lost love, he quickly made a raft of cypress branches tied together with vines. It was hastily made, and when he paddled out onto the lake, the raft didn't hold. Just as he reached the center of the lake, the bindings came apart, and the man sank down into the water. He was never seen again. According to the legend, he was reunited with his lover in death, and that they can now be seen floating side by side across the lake in a white canoe, carrying a firefly lantern to light their way. One has to wonder how anyone knew that the man saw the lights or the phantom of his lover created a raft and paddled onto the lake without being there to experience the sighting and his actions, because he was apparently alone. The first record of the tale of the Phantom Lovers date back to 1803 to the poem of Irish poet Sir Thomas More, who wrote about the old Indian legend. The poem was named A Ballad, The Lake of Dismal Swamp. An excerpt of this is, They made her a grave, too cold and damp, for a soul so warm and true. And she's gone to the lake of the dismal swamp, 
where all night long, by firefly lamp, she paddles her white canoe. Apparently, even Edgar Allan Poe wrote a poem called The Lake, which was inspired by Lake Drummond. A little bit about Lake Drummond. It was named after William Drummond, a 17th century governor of North Carolina, who, the story says, got lost in the swamp with a group of hunters. They all died except for Drummond. He staggered out of the swamp, ragged, hungry, and filled with lured tales of a lake in the deep wilderness. There is also a possible magical attribute of the water. European colonists found that, for some reason, the water stayed drinkable longer than any other water, and they would fill their casks with it for lengthy sea voyages. Though there is no definite answer on how the lake was formed, some people believe it was created by the impact of a meteorite falling to Earth. Others say it was made by a large underground peat fire as long as 6,000 years ago. And lastly, the Native American legends tell of the firebird creating the lake. What do you think of the phantom lovers of Lake Drummond? Did you like this video? Want to support this channel and get early access? Feel free to check out my Patreon page where I create content encrypted, haunting, to alien abduction, CEOs, killers, and much more. Can't support me there? Like, comment, and subscribe here.